to stay one step ahead of what's happening. Get out of the mainstream media rut with top news and positive headlines every day with ChristianHeadlines.com. The following program is sponsored by Rosenthal Wealth Management. Larry Rosenthal is a registered representative offering securities and advisory services through Satera Advisor Networks, LLC, a broker, dealer, and registered investment advisor, member FEMA SIPC. Satera is under its separate ownership for Rosenthal Wealth Management Group. Rosenthal Wealth Management Group is located at 9265 Corporate Circle in Manassas, Virginia, and can be reached at 703-330-3100. Chris McKay is not affiliated with Satera Advisor Networks, LLC, nor at Rosenthal Wealth Management Group. Bob Jones is a marketing assistant of Rosenthal Wealth Management Group and and he is associated with Satera Advisor Networks, LLC. It's time now for Making Money Sense with Larry Rosenthal. Larry is recognized as one of the nation's leading financial and retirement planners and is here right now to answer your questions. Author, speaker, and talk show host, Larry Rosenthal, is dedicated to teaching others financial stewardship from a biblical point of view. Call Larry now. Studio lines are open at 855-767-3123. That's 855-ROSE-123. Making Money Sense is on the air. How about that? It's time for another edition of the Larry Rosenthal Show, Making Money Sense. And Thanksgiving is over. And ah, now I'm trying to work it all off, Larry. How about you, my friend? <laughs> I love the leftover turkey. Well, good morning, Chris. And how are you, sir? Oh, I'm well. I'm well. Good to see you. Yeah. So it is Christmas season now, right? Indeed. We are well into the start of December. I'm yeah. seeing lights go up all over town and everything. Yep, and don't forget. Have you got the... your tree up yet? <laughs> well, there's a story behind that. Um, no, not yet, because we have a dog in the house that likes trees, and we're trying to figure out <laughs> oh, how to stop okay. the Christmas balls and stuff from getting chewed up around. But oh, we're working on it. Oh, yeah. Working well, there. that's an interesting challenge, that's for sure. <laughs> Usually ours is up by now, but we were out of town, and... We haven't gotten it back up yet, so uh, I remember the year you tried to get it through the front door, and that was interesting. Yeah, we haven't gone, uh, <laughs> we haven't gone out and and uh, to where we usually go to, uh, you know, cut it down and, and bring it in. So uh, we've been tied up here with some some family stuff, good yep. good stuff, by the way. So yeah. we're uh, gonna open well, up by that the way, debate we got the this snow afternoon. Globe, we got Let's the see. snow globe clock up now. For a, a shout out to Linda from your office. So. Yes, yes, definitely. Every uh, December, Linda will put the snow globes on our on her on her desk and uh, start, you know, trying to bring that snow in. So <laughs> hey, they say in this year we might get some snow. So there you go. sounds pretty good. Well good morning everybody and welcome. Welcome to Making Money Sense. I'm Larry Rosenthal. I'd like to welcome our longtime listeners on YouTube at Larry TV. Feel free to go there on the web, Larry TV, and you can watch us live stream the show every Saturday morning from nine to ten. Also see heard, not seen, but heard on uh WAVA 105.1 FM, as well as Sirius XM Family Talk, Channel 131 across the country. Well, where are we and where are we going? Inflation seems to be moderating, right? Decelerating economic information, decelerating growth signs. The U.S. economy now, a lot of people are talking about, could be heading for a soft landing, this is what we've been in our, in the camp for uh, for a long saying all you know for the last 17 months don't be surprised if we end up in a soft landing because the underpinnings of the economy are very strong even the feds talking about that now a lot of a lot of wall street firms are talking about that now you take a look at what happened in october you know in october the s&p was up 9% in that given month and the bond index the the us uh, ag uh, the Bloomberg Ag rose just over four and a half percent in in a single month in no in October. That's the best month since May of 1985. 1985. Mm. As interest rates drop, bond prices will go up. If you remember last year in 2022, bond interest rates shot way way up, and bond prices dropped pretty precipitously. You know, and so what a great time to be getting into these bonds, you know, the last handful of months 
uh, and still even going forward. So, so ask yourself this question. I asked, I asked last week on the radio show, what are your, where are your bonds located? What kind of bonds do you have and are in the right position right now? So with all that being said, people are already starting to talk about interest rates being lowered. <laughs> well, guess what? That's not going to happen anytime soon. Mm. Okay, I'm just telling you that right now. The Fed's going to remain higher for longer because they need to get the question answered. Have they gone too far? Have they raised too much or not enough? The only way to figure that out is basically to let it sit and marinate at these current rates for the next three to five months to see what really happens with inflation, corporate earnings, and unemployment, and PCE, personal consumptions and expenditures. That's the deal. Fed Chair uh, Jerome Powell this past week pushed back on the notion of a pivot starting to lower rates anytime soon. Um, but we do have some some Fed members actually sort of whispering out there saying – Sometime next year, possibly, you know, so so we've always been in the camp right now of probably think springtime, think uh, Memorial Day weekend, uh, July 4th weekend, somewhere in that zone. It wouldn't surprise me to see the Fed coming off and starting to lower a little bit if we do, in fact, have this slowdown. But then again, if the economy can digest, handle and still produce growth, positive GDP with the rates where they are now, there's no sense in, in, in changing them. But the good news is we're off the bottom. We're off the zeros as, as far as interest rates rates go. The Fed has a lot of uh, uh, power, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of uh, ammo, I guess, if, if the economy does slow, they can start re- lowering rates and stimulating, which is uh, very, very good news, you know, as far as uh, everything goes there. So some quick readings on the economy. We're getting, again, mixed numbers. We're seeing certain sectors slowing down while other sectors are reaccelerating, sort of a rolling type of an up and down across different sectors. Uh, but bottom line is, you know, as we sit here today, a little bit more optimism than we were over the last 17 months. We're now 18 months completed since the uh, start of the rate hikes. Again, we've had 10 rate hikes in 14 months, and we're sitting in month 18 right now. We are well on the pause button at this point. Let's let it pause, see what happens over the next three to five months. Uh, you know, so we're starting to see a broader a broader um, support in overall stocks rather than just the tech stocks leading everything along the way. So that's very, very good news. Make sure your portfolio is balanced and diversified and still keep an eye on risk, okay? We are not out of the woods yet by any means at all. We are definitely not waving the all clear flag. Keep an eye on risk. We're starting to see P.E. ratios push up, which basically means this. We're getting, we're getting uh, expansion. We're getting stock price expansion. Now we need to see earnings come in to back this up in the fourth quarter. If earnings come in in the fourth quarter, then we'll start to see P.E. ratios level back down again. So, so things look pretty good. Stay, stay diversified, as I mentioned, and keep your eye on the risk uh, as far as all that goes. So good news uh, across the board at this particular point here. We are in the next stages of the uh, recovery, if you will, in the economy. So, hey, dial us up at 855-ROSE-123. Give us any questions at all. Today is Open Mic Saturday. Whatever's on your mind in the stock market, the your 401Ks, the government TSP, estate planning, stewardship, charitable giving, tax loss, harvesting, whatever is on your mind today. How to what do start you want for Christmas? S- yeah, what do you want for Christmas? <laughs> There you go. Give us a call. 855-ROSE-123. That's 855-767-3123. You're listening to Making Money Sense. I'm Larry Rosenthal, and we will be back in a moment. Listening to Making Money Sense live with Larry Rosenthal. Phone lines are open for your retirement and financial planning questions at 855 Rose 123. That's 855 767 3123. More Making Money Sense in a moment. And here's another Money Minute with Larry Rosenthal. So many different ways to invest money. Lump sum deposits, buy and hold, market timing. How about dollar cost averaging? 
put the same amount of money into the same investment at every interval, whether it's monthly, quarterly, annually, whatever it may be. This gives you the greatest opportunity to get the average price over the long term of the investment because one of the secrets to creating wealth is the acquisition of shares. You want to keep buying more and more shares over time. On the flip side, when you're in your retirement years and you want to distribute dollars to yourself for income, do the same thing in reverse. Dollar cost average out during your retirement years. Get started with your financial plan today at LarryRosenthal.com or call right now for the Financial Planning Toolkit, 855-767-3123. That's 855-ROSE-123. This is The Larry Rosenthal Show. You are listening to The Larry Rosenthal Show. If you'd like to sing along, uh, Larry, you're more than welcome to. I know it's one of your favorite Christmas songs. There you go. But I know you're a frosty guy, actually. I am a frosty guy, yeah. Yeah. Well, let's see if we can find some frosty here for a little later on this morning. (laughs) That sounds good. Yeah, maybe dress up your... your, If you're watching on YouTube, let's dress up the screen just a little bit. There we go. Now now you should be in the Christmas spirit. Yeah. Check it out. Check it out. Let's go ahead and bring Mark on the line. Good morning, Mark. How are you today from D.C.? Hey, good morning, Larry. Coming at you from Washington, D.C. First time caller. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. How can I help you, sir? Hey, so I just heard you talking about the economy, and you were like, so while there are some parts that are doing well and some parts that are not doing well, uh, you know, it's kind of, we're going to see what happens. But I would, I've always heard that housing and jobs drive the economy. And right now, as a real estate guy, housing is terrible. It couldn't be any worse. We have low inventory, very high interest rates. And I think that until we see some relief in the housing sector, that we're, we, we, Kind of the Fed has to lower rates, or else we will be in a recession. I just wanted to get your take on that. So, you know, what drives the economy is consumer spending, okay? Housing is the largest multiplier of the economy. When you build a house, look at all the things that happen. You have all the construction. You have the permits. You have insurance. You have uh, carpeting, nails, wood, just all the supplies, landscaping, all that kind of stuff. It's a very big multiplying effect into the economy, okay? Now, you take a look at where we are coming out of COVID with real estate. There are places in real estate. I know a realtor in the North Virginia area who, who, who is selling houses. He's having a record year this year, okay? But I also know others that are struggling in that, in that sector as well. You have to take a look at real estate around the country. One of the things that we have right now is we have sort of a pause on people selling their existing home. A lot of people during COVID, Mark, went out and they refinanced their property from the 5 and 6% rates down to the upper twos, mid threes. They're sitting in those properties right now and they're going, I'm not selling because if I sell, I'm going to have to go get a new place at 6 or 7.5%. So inventory is very lacking. Then on top of that, you take a good look at the number of millennials that are out there, age, what is it now, 27 to 35, 36, something like that. They need housing and they're out there starting to buy housing. So we have low inventory, which is helping to support prices. Now, this past month, we did see on a nationwide that housing prices have dropped. So we are starting to see people that are wanting to sell to, 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 to lower their prices because it's a bringing in more, more uh, uh, purchasers, more, more, more buyers. I couldn't think of the word there. Sorry about that. But my, my, my point to you is this, is that real estate will ebb and flow along just like any of the other 11 sectors inside the economy. Okay. So I still think that real estate is still going to continue to hold its value for the next three to five years simply because of the supply and demand issues that we have. You know, we are probably six, seven, maybe eight months away from the Fed starting to lower rates. 
But rates can also drop without the Fed touching the needle as well. If you take a look at the 10-year note, which everything wraps around the 10-year, mortgages, car loans, credit cards, student loans, the whole nine yards, this, just in the past three and a half, four weeks, it went from about 5% down to 429 OK, that's a seven or eight basis point drop in rates that will be reflective in rates coming down in the mortgage market that will bring in more buyers here soon. So so hang in there. I hear what you're saying. OK, but when you're when you're talking when I'm talking, the overall economy is being strong. Look at unemployment numbers are very strong. Wages are holding up. Real estate prices, for the most part, are holding up to a certain degree, even in, in light of these these. Um, high rates and stuff. So so not every day is a green day in all the different sectors, but but hang in there. I, I, I hear what you're saying. So when you take a look at, at, at Enber that determines, which is National Board of Economic Research, they determine if we're in a recession or not. They usually announce it six or seven months later. They go, oh, y'all were in a recession in your rearview mirror. Here's the way it looked, okay? We're, we're really not close to that announcement being made at any, at any particular point. If, if you really wanted to dive in and die the 11 sectors in the S&P 500, what we've actually seen is something that's, a, that's kind of a unique, it's almost an anomaly this time around, which is what we would call rolling recessions. In other words, take manufacturing for a while. You know, over several months, manufacturing was down and bleak while something else, maybe technology, was, was expanding and growing. Then you saw a pause in technology and you saw utilities starting to rise back and forth. We sort of had rolling recessions in those, in those areas, but yet aggregately corporate earnings are starting to come back up again, consumer strong and continuing to spend. Although last month, the consumer was down 0.2. So in, in, in spending, my, my point is there's a truckload of data out there to really look at all of this. And from a macro standpoint across the U.S. mark, it appears that the U.S. is headed for somewhat of a slowdown because as you astutely pointed out, rates are high and restrictive, and the Fed has acknowledged we're going to remain restrictive. The policy is restrictive now. The Fed's fund rates at 55 while inflation's at 3.7. That's restrictive right there. The Fed wants to make sure inflation doesn't rear its ugly head again, so they're going to they're going to sit on this for a while, okay? And and when 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 we start to see rates come back down again, and they will, then you're going to see more more of an e expansion happening again. But but you know the the market has been pushing up in anticipation of all of this, and we will start to see more activity in the real estate market. So that's kind of the 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 play on it all. It looks like we're we will have somewhat of a slowdown. How much will be determined in the next three to five months, but I'm in the camp of a soft landing, which means not a recession. If we did slip into one, if, then it's going to be very shallow and short-lived. It's certainly not going to be anything like we saw in 2008 because, as you pointed out, you know, jobs are very plentiful. Uh, real estate is still, still building. You know, I was... Uh, 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 I, I jumped on a plane in, in, in D.C. Uh, uh, last week at, uh, uh, or a couple weeks ago, and as I was flying over, I counted 11 cranes uh, around the city. Yeah. And, and so yeah. there's construction happening, you know. It's happening. Um, you know, uh, so, so that is not a recessionary now. sign. Uh, in fact, they're saying now that D.C. is going to rename their national bird to the crane. There's so much building going on, but I like it. But but I'll t but I'll tell you what. One thing, uh, you know, credit card debt has just surpassed one trillion dollars. Uh, and even if we were to go into a recession, I don't think this administration would allow it to be called a recession. So that's well, Mark, why I'm very uh, yes. Mark, here's here's the deal, and and remember this: the Fed is a standalone entity. Okay. You've got the news, you've got the right channel news and the left channel news, and they're going to spend things according to their narrative. Pay attention to the economy through BLS, Bureau of Labor Statistics, and what the Fed notes say. Look at the conference board on the 10 leading economic indicators. You've got leading economic indicators, coincident and lagging. That's what you study when you take a look at the true underpinnings of the economy. 
once you know these numbers and they come out every day, all, all month long, different reports all month long, once you understand how to read all these numbers that come out, eight, nine, ten reports a day, and you look at them and you understand, then you look at the news and you go, they don't know what they're talking about. They're spinning this and they're spinning that. That's okay. You know, our job here is to make money. Our job here is to help clients build and retain and maintain wealth in a tax efficient manner. So we focus on that. Now, you have to deal with fiscal policy, which is the White House and Congress tax and spend. And then you have to deal with monetary policy, which is what the Fed is, okay? Controlling of money supply, M1, M2, right? And so it's Enber that term determines if we're in a recession. But you know who else determines if we're in a recession? People at the kitchen table. <laughs> People at the kitchen table will determine if we're in a recession. And you take a look now at something called the PCE, which is the Fed's number one uh, target that they look at, be, uh, more important than CPI. PCE, which is personal consumption and expenditures. Think about that. Personal consumption and expenditures. Where are we spending money? You go to the grocery store in the morning and you buy cereal. Maybe you buy XYZ brand for the last five years. Guess what? Today, it's too expensive because of inflation. You buy an off-brand of cereal. You're still buying in that same industry, but you've made a different choice. What are your personal expenditures? You're still buying cereal. The economy is still moving along, but you're doing it in an alternate product choice. That's coming down. That's driving the cost of, 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 of overall goods down right now, and that's what the Fed really likes to see. So, so it's tracking down in that manner. Uh, but pay attention to, to all of that rather than what you're hearing on the news a lot of times. You know, um, that, that, that would be my, my advice to you is, is to take a look at it from that standpoint. And then, you know, if, if you look at things, you know, you're talking about administration, right? And, and so yep. if you look at things from that perspective, from fiscal policy, again, White House and Congress, tax and spend, the other side of the street is the Federal Reserve monetary supply, okay? So back on the fiscal side, tax and spend, White House and Congress, I've managed money in Reagan, let's see, Reagan, Bush, Clinton, Bush, uh, Obama, um, Trump, and Biden, okay? And, and I have seen different economic ideologies come and go on the fiscal side of the House, right? I've seen Republicans raise taxes and lower taxes. I've seen Democrats raise taxes and lower taxes. I've seen it. And, and when, when, when we see the White House and Congress put forth a spending and a tax policy, because that's what they do on the fiscal side, when we see them put forth those, those programs— then it tells us where we should move money away from or toward. Because money's going to seek its place on the planet where it gets its best risk-adjusted return. And then you take a look at the other side of the street, what the Fed is doing. You know, the Fed came out earlier uh, this year. What was it, 23 or 20? Yeah, I think it was in the first quarter of this year in 23, um, it, it may have been the prior year. I'm not sure. I, 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 anyway, let's just call it this year. And they actually stated, you know, they, they basically said, hey, we're not getting any help from the fiscal side of the house. OK, meaning stop spending, stop doing this stuff because there's too many dollars chasing too few goods. And you're talking about credit card debt going up. Yes, that's correct. We are seeing credit card debt going up. However, it hasn't quite hit trend line. But do you take a look also at the amount of, of inflationary pressures that we still have? In the peak of COVID, we had $2.3 trillion of excess savings by the consumer. That's been coming down. Now we still have $1.1 trillion of excess savings uh, by the consumer. So we're seeing credit card debt rise but at the same time, we're also seeing spending – people are still spending their excess dollars that, from stimulus and things like that that they had and maybe refinancing, cashing out, stuff like that, and putting it back in the economy. So, so we're, we're getting these big bulges of things that we have to digest from the, from the uh, COVID stimulus and, and things like that. We're not out of the woods yet, but we're getting there, okay? Um, car, car prices have dropped. 
you know, you take a look now at all of the EVs that people aren't buying anymore, okay? We're starting to see car prices come down, new and used cars, both combustible engine and uh, electric vehicles are starting to come down now. Uh, we're starting to see prices come down a little bit in real estate, as we talked about a moment ago. So things are working their way out. But I would tell you this, though. It's, it's very easy from your lens and from mine to always look out into the economy and say, this is wrong and that's wrong. Well, nine months later, this and that will be okay, but the other two or three other things will be wrong. It's never a perfect time to invest. What we have to understand is what is the economy telling us where we should be putting our money right now Right. Because it's never a perfect time. There's never everything is good to invest. So so when you're looking at 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 whatever source of data you're looking at, that's how you want to go about gauging where you should put your dollars. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Yes. And I appreciate you taking my call, Larry. Yep, absolutely, Mark. You have a great weekend. I'll tell you what I'd like to do. I'd like to send you out our financial planning toolkit and that can kind of help you start building out a financial plan. Um, to, to really take a look in. And, and, and if you want, I'll send you out uh, a, a document that I've put together years ago. It's called Market Moving Indicators. And these are all the, the, the more salient points of the economic data that comes out every month. If you understand these, you'll see what's happening in the economy. Okay? Why don't, why don't, if you want, I'll be happy to uh, put you on hold and get your information, and we'll email that out to you next week. Okay, Mark? And you can start studying it. That'd be great, Larry. Absolutely. You have a great weekend. Appreciate the phone call. Hey, you're listening to Making Money Sense. Give us a ring at 855-ROSE-123. That's 855-767-3123. Love the economic conversation. Absolutely. It's a lot of fun. You know, hey, we can stay in the weeds like that or we can pull it back to top level things. So give us a call on this open mic Saturday. First weekend in in uh, December, Christmas season, right? Hey. hey. Give us a call, 855-ROSE-123. I'm Larry Rosenthal, and we'll be back in a moment with more of your Making Money Sense. children could be left alone while parents try to eke out a living. About 10 years ago, residents of Prince William and Fauquier counties in Virginia formed Children with Disabilities Fund International. It focuses on the needs of disabled children. CDFI's current work in Jamaica and Kenya supports about 300 disabled children and their families. For some of these children, they're getting the care they need for the first time in their lives. CDFI recently began an individual child sponsorship program in an effort to better meet the needs of these disabled children. To choose your child to sponsor, go to thecdfi.org. That's thecdfi.org. Your gift will help transform not only a disabled child's life, but the lives of their parents and of the surrounding community. Go to thecdfi.org. Make a difference. Go to thecdfi.org. You've seen and heard him on Fox Business, CNBC, and The Wall Street Journal. Larry Rosenthal is here right now to take your calls at 855-767-3123. That's 855-ROSE-123. This is The Larry Rosenthal Show. Welcome back to The Larry Rosenthal Show. If you'd like to dial in, 855-767-3123 is the phone number to call. That's 855-ROSE-123 to talk to Larry Rosenthal, who is live here in studio with us on YouTube and on Sirius XM and on WAVA. You're everywhere, Larry. You're everywhere. I'm everywhere, Chris, but I'm not there, right? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> when you come to a fork in the road, take it, right? That's who right. said that? <laughs> you know I who said I that? A, I come to a fork in the road and I put it in my plate and eat something. That's what you, I do. You know who said that? No. It was Yogi Berra. Yogi? 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. One of his yogiisms. And and the reality is is that the road to his house went down and then it, it he lived at the, the end of a circular driveway. So he would explain to people, when you come to a fork in the road, take it. <laughs> because it would come around to his house either way you went. So that was uh that, that's how it happened. So Yogi Bear, pretty man. pretty neat. Yep. Yeah. Very, very good. You know, he had he had um uh, amazing stats. One year, he only struck out 24 times in the entire season mm. of, you know, four or 500 at bats. Just amazing. Just amazing. Ten World Series rings with the Yankees and then uh, three others. That is success. Uh, that is yeah, definitely as, the definition a, of success. A, yeah. A coach, yeah, without a doubt. So, hey, it is Christmas season. It is giving season, right? We had Giving Tuesday last week, I heard about. Yeah, it's uh, new. Throughout yeah. the internet and things like that, you know. So we're dealing in man's economy, God's economy, talking back and forth. You know, Proverbs 3, 27, 28 says, Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is in your power to act. Do not say to your neighbor... Come back tomorrow and I'll give it to you when you already have it with you. Let's stop and think about, you know, some efficient ways to give, donor-advised funds and charitable trust and different things of that nature, um, you know, and, and, and think about maybe stretching our giving this year. What if we decided to stretch? You know, this is when a lot of nonprofits run their final year end, you know, campaigns and stuff like that. And and people are looking to make donations here and there and, and things of that nature. Let's just challenge everybody. Let's just double it up. What you normally give last year. Think about giving it this year. Think about what Proverbs says. You know, in in God's economy, he it, it, it's sort of an open hand, you know, help people love others, you know, treat others the way you would wish to be treated. You know, Proverbs there, and the Bible is filled with uh, over 2,000 verses on stewardship and giving and things of that nature. So uh, be thinking about that this giving season. Let's bring Rob on the line. Good morning, Rob. How are you today? Hey, wonderful. I hope you're doing well, and thank you for allowing me to be on your show. I have a uh, question. I'm going to be receiving, sir. Um, I'm going to be receiving um, an inheritance, and of that particular amount, I'd like to invest either five hundred or six hundred thousand in something that's going to be a, a high interest um, investment that'll make it prayerfully a million, a million and a half, so I can retire someday. Because I've never been able to save; I've had to take care of my special needs daughter for years. Okay, and pay for a lot of money for her, and that's where everything went. And well, I, I understand. Don't like, eh, I don't know. Yeah, so first of all, Rob, I'm sorry to hear about your loss because you're receiving an inheritance, first of all, okay? Thank you. Secondly, Thank you. what we need to do is basically sit down and take a look at what your expenses require each month going forward. Right. Right. Then we take a right. look at, at how much dollars you're actually going to receive what type of return we need to get to produce to supplement your expenses each month when you choose to retire at some point down the road. And then we also have to examine looking at getting a special needs trust for your daughter. Because if something were to happen to you as her caregiver, what's the next step? So these dollars that you would use for your lifestyle and in her care along during your retirement years would then need to probably transfer into a special needs trust of some point to be in care for your daughter. That's what I see in that statement that you just told me right there. That's sort of the basis of the, uh, of the financial plan to begin. Does that make sense? It does. I have a trust, and now I'm going to get a third-party trust so that when something happens to me, I can transfer it in to protect her money. And you okay. know why I have to protect her money. Um, so I just didn't know if there's something in the meantime, because I'll be debt-free next month. And just, I don't know if there's anything that's earning 11%, 10%. I don't know. But I can just put it in, it'll be safe. I don't know. That's I don't know. So yeah, so so what what I need to do is show you how it works, give you education on on what does it look like to get ten percent or eleven percent. There are, there are dividends out there. There are stocks that are paying ten, eleven, twelve percent dividend yields. Okay, uh, and there are stocks that are paying one and two. There are stocks that are growing a lot higher than those numbers, and there are stocks that aren't doing so well. And so I need to, to teach you a little bit about if you're looking at income. We're going to invest for income. 
That means growth is secondary, income is first. If we wanted to invest for growth, that means growth is first and income is secondary. And if you wanted to do a combination, you'd mix and match the two, like in a blender, if you will, okay? And, and so I need to show you, if you're looking at, at saying, hey, here's a pile of money, I need it to produce 8, 10, 12, whatever percent it is, and I need to live off those dividends or interest, right, okay? I need to show you what type of principal risk there is or isn't in that formula. There's a way that you can do what's called bond laddering, where you buy a bunch of different corporate bonds that are backed by those companies, and they mature at par value, and they ladder up interest rates. There are stocks that I'm, I'm very familiar with in our income portfolios. Uh, we have clients in them you know, earning double digits as far as yield goes. Uh, but you need to see how the principal moves up and down, and then you need to look at the other side of growth and moderate growth, growth and in income and stuff like that. So I, 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 I think the conversation starts with you getting a good understanding of what your choices are, and then we start looking at, at making an, in, in investments in them, okay? I, I always want to make sure that my clients know what they uh, – understand as much as they want to understand about what they own, Okay. And so I think that's, that's the spectrum we have to look at since you're not familiar with what all the choices are out there. And, and so th th that's what I would suggest starting with, something like that. Let's get you some education on what your choices are. Then you can make an informed decision. And then you can really understand the risk appetite that you're talking about. Okay? Okay. All right. Well, let me know how I can do that. Yep. Well, let me, let me do this, Rob. I'll put you on hold real quick, and, and Josh will get your contact information. And then we'll have someone reach out to you next week, and we'll set up a, a phone call, a Zoom call, or in-person meeting. I don't know where you're calling from, uh, and, and give you the education to step you through it all, okay? Thank you. Absolutely. Appreciate the phone call. You're listening to Making Money Sense. Dial us up at 855-ROSE-123. That's 855-767-3123. Philippians says, Philippians chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself, not looking to your own interest, but to each of you to the interest of others. You know, again, I threw out the challenge here. Let's, let's talk about giving. Let's stretch our giving this season. Let's go ahead and stretch it, okay? We usually give a certain amount every year. A lot of people do. Let's talk about stretching it. Let's sit down and see what happens if we stretch it, you know? Uh, Jesus says you, it's it's uh, better to it's better to give than to receive, you know. See what that that really feels like. And coming down to the end of the year here, let's jump back over to man's economy, right? Because we got the Lord's economy, giving. We got man's economy. You know, he or she who dies with the most toys wins, right? Well, let's take some of the toys from the IRS and put it in our pocket. How's that sound, Chris? <laughs> let's do that. All right. So you know, let's talk a little bit about tax harvesting. Tax harvesting. Hmm. Maybe you have some stocks that didn't do so well this year. You can sell them. Now, I'm talking about stocks that are in a non-IRA account, non-IRA account, and, and maybe they're down four or $5,000. Maybe they were in the wrong sector or it was just you took a flyer and it didn't work out or whatever. You can sell that, you know, if, 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 you, if you held it for longer than 12 months – then you can sell it and get a long-term capital loss if it's down. And then you can take that money and re-employ it into something else that has at least 70% dissimilar holdings. So you avoid the wash rule issue, and then you get a write-off for it. Or you can park it in money market cash for 30 days and, or 31 days and then rebuy it. But this way you're harvesting a loss – and you're still staying invested into the markets. So think about that for a second. Go through and take a look at all of your uh, accounts that are non-IRA accounts. IRA accounts do not qualify for this, but non-IRA accounts, non-qualify. Your trust accounts qualify for this as well. And take a look at, you know what, can I, can I do this? And here's a simple way 
let's suppose that you're sitting there and you say, I'll just do this very simply. Let's suppose you said, you know, I've got, I've got $20,000 and I want to make an investment. Okay. I want to move money out of my bank account. Now the markets are starting to move. I see what's going on. I'm getting a little bit of, of FOMA fear of missing out, right? The markets had a great month last month, you know, and, and, and fear of missing out. So I want to take this 20 grand and I want to invest it. But at the same time, Maybe you've got twenty thousand in a stock that you that that is down, you know, or or let's say the, the stock is even up. Here's a way you can you can spend it to charitable giving. You can take those shares of that appreciated stock, and you can make a donation to your charity, to your church, to whatever, right? Five hundred one three C corporation, not tax exempt corporation, and then you can take that twenty thousand that you were gonna. Uh, uh, give to the charity anyway, and rebuy the stock. This way, you're still owning the stock in the same scenario, right? You're getting the same tax deduction, but you're, you're raising up your cost basis. So in the future, you'd end up paying less taxes. So there's an efficient way to go about stretching or increasing our giving, if you will. Let's bring Heather on from, the DC, from D.C. Good morning, Heather. How are you today? I'm pretty good. Thank you for taking my call. Yes, ma'am. How can I help you? I just wanted to get your knowledge or how do you feel about um, employee, employers uh, sharing plan trust, if you know anything about that and if it's worth anything. And em- because, uh, what, is- what was the name of it? Employers sharing plan trust? Uh-huh, yes. I've never heard of that. What is it? You never heard um, it, well, it's supposed to be a, I guess, um, a retirement plan that um, the employers are. Are you talking about a profit sharing plan? Yeah. Okay, a profit sharing plan. Yes, I've heard of, and I'm very familiar with them. Yes, very good, very good. Right. And, yeah, so um, so that can come in the form. Oh, go ahead and ask answer the question. Ask the question. I'm sorry. Yeah, so I just want to know. You know, should we at least know what is going into it? So, you know, like with the other plans, you get a statement to know. You know what your portion is, but for this one, we, I have no idea what is going into it. What what at the end of when you're eligible for retirement. I, I would, Heather, I would reach out to your HR department and I would ask them mm-hmm. these questions because they have all that information. So, so mm-hmm. they're going to give it to you. Okay. Oh. Um, they, they definitely will. Yeah. So if you're just sitting there listening to other employees, talk and guess, just reach out to your HR department and, and tell them and they'd be happy to, to furnish you with all that information. Okay. Okay, cool. But it's, it's something that, that's legit. Oh, a profit sharing plan? Absolutely, it's mm-hmm. legit. Yes, and it can come in, the, in in a few different forms. You know, the most popular mm-hmm. is a four hundred one k plan, where you put mm-hmm. your own money in. The employer matches to a certain degree, and at the end of the year, the employer can choose if they wish to make a profit sharing contribution into the plan in your account right there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, but, they're very good. All right, but my concern is that you know with those four hundred one k plans, you get a statement, you get you know some information as to you know where you are. But for this plan, you know there's no information being given on a annual basis or monthly basis. Well, if there's no information, something's wrong. I would reach out to your HR department. They have to disclose this to you. If money's being put away in your in your name in custody in a trust or something for your name, you have to have that information. So that's how I would reach that out to you. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Absolutely appreciate the phone call. Hey, you're listening to Making Money Sense. Give us a ring at eight five five Rose one two three. That's eight five five seven six seven three one two three. Let's bring Williams on the line from Pennsylvania. Good morning, William. How are you? I'm doing great. How can I help you? Yeah, I have a uh, uh, an annuity. It was a seven year retirement annuity that re- that uh, matured in May, and now I'm just sitting on this money that's only earning two point five percent interest rate, 
and I want to move it to somewhere where I can get a better interest rate on it. Absolutely. I would, especially with the rates today. Mm-hmm. So you said it matures in May? And it, yes, it matured in May. Oh, it matured in May. So now it's sitting there, right? So let me ask yeah. you this. Is it an IRA annuity or a non-IRA annuity? I believe it was an IRA annuity. Okay, so you can move that to wherever you wish. You can move it to another annuity if you wanted to. And there's three types, uh, three or four different types there. Or you can move it to a regular non-annuity investment account and probably save a lot of cost on that. Okay, Uh, so it depends right now, William, on what your investment objective is. What do you want to try to accomplish with this money? How will it fit into your financial plan to save for retirement or whatever it is down the road, right? That's yeah. That alone will dictate sort of what product you use, whether it's another annuity or not, or maybe you put half into an annuity and half not into an annuity. It just depends on what your goals are there. All right, well, my goals right now, because I'm 66 years old, uh, I started late in life on, on my retirement, and at this point here, I want to try and get the money to make as much interest as, as it can because – I plan maybe to retire in about maybe another five to six years. So it sounds like to me that we need it to be driven by the markets a little bit. And in Uh the markets now, you can also have some hedging positions that that give you downside protection risk very similar to that of an annuity, but for a lot less cost on the hidden fees. So, you know, we, we can show you those different types of products. If you like, I'll put you on hold and Josh will get your information. We'll have someone give you a ring next week and send you off that information for you, okay? All right. Thank you. Absolutely. Let me put you on a quick hold here. Appreciate the phone call. Hey, give us a ring at 855-ROSE-123. That's 855-767-3123. It is Open Mic Saturday. We were talking a little bit about tax harvesting and stretching our giving here going into quote-unquote, the giving season right at the end of the year, Chris. Chris is stretching there on YouTube. Check us out on YouTube at LarryRosenthal.tv. Watch us stream the the show and and, uh, follow us on uh, YouTube. Is it a follow us or a like? or No, it's a follow us. It's a subscribe. There you go, Chris. Right? It's a subscribe. It's a subscribe. You know, So just to just give everybody a little insight, I'm not that bad. I'm pretty good with technology, okay? But okay. Chris has just got all kinds of things flying around <laughs> on the screen here in front of me. I'm looking at things going all different ways. All the, there's so, the subscribe button. Subscribe, Put it up there. hit the bell. Yes. yes. Perfect, We'd perfect, love for you to perfect. Do that. Thank you very hey, much. and those of you that are watching on LarryRosenthal.tv on YouTube, uh, feel free to type up your questions right there, and Chris will read them live on the screen here. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back in a moment with more Making Money Sense. Listening to Making Money Sense live with Larry Rosenthal. Phone lines are open for your retirement and financial planning questions at 855 Rose 123. That's 855 767 3123. More Making Money Sense in a moment. Call right now with your questions, 855-767-3123. That's 855-ROSE-123. Coast to coast from the nation's capital, this is the Larry Rosenthal Show. And here's another Money Minute with Larry Rosenthal. We've all heard the more risk you get, the more opportunity there is for growth in returns in your investments. However, can you have too much risk in your investments so that you get diminishing returns? You can only water ski behind one boat at a time. Make sure your risk-adjusted return is aligned with your investment objectives. Join in and- 
Now nationwide and coast to coast from sea to shining sea, call now, 855-767-3123. That's 855-ROSE-123. Live from the nation's capital, this is the Larry Rosenthal Show. I know you want to, Larry. Go ahead. You can sing. Fly with me. I can't say, Chris. People, you know, people's paint would start peeling off the walls of their house if I was singing, okay? Oh, I can play I the guitar, it. but they don't let me sing. Yeah, it's good Christmas that time. That time. I love it. Yeah. Let's bring Abraham on the line from D.C. Good morning, Abraham. How are you today? Good morning, Larry. I uh, want to ask you a question. It's kind of a repeat of what you shared earlier about sending to- uh, stocks to charitable places. Yep. Uh, if if I did if I did options most of the year, but it was to build up so I could buy stocks, how would I now balance by giving some of those stocks to a charitable organization? Do I have to have them for six months, or what would I need to do? No. So so here's the deal on that. If if uh, when you so if you're you're buying and selling options throughout the year, right? But it, that was the earlier part of the year to build up some income to buy some of the stocks that I like. Okay, so now you bought a stock. You bought XYZ stock, let's say, in April, right? And you put in, you know, uh, $10,000 or whatever it was. And now that stock's worth twelve. let us just say. If you were to gift that twelve, that's the deductible amount right there. Well, you don't get the whole oh, okay. deduction. You get, you get up to 30% of your adjusted gross income, and, you know, you go through the system there. But you're actually gifting the value the day you gift it has nothing to do with your 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 earnings and things like that. Now, let's suppose that in the course of accumulating cash to buy the stock, you made several transactions. Each one of those transactions are independent of each other and will go on your tax return for your buys and sells, the premiums that you received to harvest to buy the cash. That's taxable event to you. But perhaps by donating the stock, you can wipe that out. Do you follow what I mean? Okay, I do. So when I donate XYZ stock, I think earlier you said you can also buy it back. I, I missed that part. That's the part. I'm yeah. So to. so in a very simple way here, let's let's not confuse everybody with options. Let's just suppose that you bought XYZ stock. You put ten grand into it. Okay, and you're sitting here, and 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 it's worth say fifteen. And let's say you have 15000 that you want to give to your church. Instead of giving 15000 out of your checking account and you keeping the stock, you can give the stock worth 15000 to your church, and then you can rebuy that stock the very same day, and now you have a cost basis of 15000 versus ten. So later, if the stock grows to twenty, you have a five thousand dollar gain instead of a ten thousand dollar taxable gain event. It's a way to increase your cost basis on the stock. Okay, and your brokerage will allow you to rebuy it that same day. Hundred percent. Yep. Definitely. Definitely. That is awesome. Thank yeah, you so it's, much, Larry. Appreciate absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah, it's great. And and listen, a- Abraham. We've got a whole bunch of different charitable ways that you can give and stuff. And if you want, I'll send you out some of that information if you'd like me to put you on, on hold. And then you can take that and, and, and become more efficient. I've done, I've done educational classes. I've, I've talked to, to you know, people that are major donors uh, in, in different nonprofits about so many different ways that you can give more tax efficiently to the cause that you want your church or, or organizations or whatever. And people leave a lot of tax deductions on the table without even realizing it. There is a friendly part of the tax code that encourages this. You just have to get educated on it. And I'll put you on hold. Josh will get your info, and then we'll send that out to you, okay? Thank you, Larry. Absolutely. Appreciate the phone call. Hey, give us a ring, 855-ROSE-123. Let's bring Yolanda on from Virginia. Good morning, Yolanda. How are you? Good morning. I'm doing really well. Thank you for asking. Mm-hmm. Um, my question is this, you know, when it comes to things like uh, liquid assets, how much is there a formula or is there um, some sort of number that we should have when it comes to cash on hand or cash and savings? And should this be done before we get more engaged in things like IRAs or uh, mutual funds or stocks? You know, what, what is that? What should that look like? 
Depending on the type of job and the security of your job, I would like you to have three to six months of living expenses saved in the bank. Okay? Then you're ready to start making investments and things. That's, that's the building blocks. That's what I always believe and I've seen work well for people. Now, there are other advisors out there, Yolanda, that'll tell you, nah, stick a month or two in the bank and then start sending money in and make investments. I would rather you have a much firmer foundation that has more depth to it because if you go Christmas shopping and you walk out in the parking lot and you have three flat tires instead of one, now you've got an issue, right? Okay? Exactly. So, exactly. so that's, what, that, that's what I would like you to have. And and uh, I'll, if you want, I'll send you out our financial planning toolkit, and it can help give you that guidance. And then, and then also we can send you some information on the different types of cash and cash equivalents. You know, you take a look at T-bills today, you get 4 or 5% interest on those, and those are cash equivalents. Yolanda, I've got to put well, you on a quick I'm hold a, here. I've got, yep, let me go ahead and Thank do you. that. Josh will get your info, and i got to close out the show. Appreciate the phone call. Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening and watching today, LarryRosenthal.tv. Hit that subscribe button, and while you're there, also jump over to our website, RosenthalWealthManagement.com or LarryRosenthal.com. Sign up for our newsletter. We send out a, mo- a, mo- a Monday market commentary every week. It's free, no charge. We'll be back next Saturday with another session of the Larry Rosenthal Show, Making Money Sense. All righty. Can bring Yolanda back on if you like. Uh, yep. Hi, Yolanda. Are you still there? Yes, I am. Hi. All right. Sorry, I had to close out the show there, but um, you can. We can send you out information on cash and cash equivalents and get you started on a financial plan to help show you how all that stuff should be aligned, if you like. I would absolutely love it. I would love that. I was expecting you to say more than three to six months, um, to be honest, just with the way things are with jobs. And sometimes you have lower pay and the expenses are still as high as they are. But um, Well, I, did, I did say, depending on the type of job you have and the security of that job, I want it to be sure. three, to, three to six months. You know, and also, if you stop and think about this for a second, in most cases... Not all, but in most cases, people's biggest financial risk is an unplanned spending spree because you have hospitalization insurance, you have fire insurance, you have auto insurance, you have all that stuff, right? Right. Okay. So if we're, if we're managing our assets, we're managing our income versus our expenses the way we should, from time to time, we will incur a higher expense. Then we can dip into some of the savings that we have and then replenish it along the road uh, going, going forward. But that, that usually sure. works out. But again, it does depend on your income. It depends on the stability of your job uh, and, and, and things like that, too. So, but we can, okay. we can vet all that out in the financial plan. That I'm going to send out this to. this toolkit. Yeah, I'll put you on a quick hold. Josh will get your contact information, and then we'll have somebody give you a ring next week and set something up for you. Okay. I would love to. Thank you. Absolutely. You have a great day, Yolanda. Let me play show and hold. Alrighty, I will send her over to Josh, and that is done. And Larry, we are done. <laughs> All right, we are <laughs> for out. another week. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. I'll see you next week, Chris. See you next time. Thanks, man. Bye.